What is the cooldown, everybody? I am back again with the Black and White 2 Wi-Fi battle. This is a battle I had against Num Nexus. Uh, he asked me for a battle on Skype, so I kind of gladly accepted his request because of the fact that the battle finder is down, so kind of hard finding battles. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, as you can see, this is a UU battle, but he does have a Deoxys D, which I actually didn't realize was OU at the time until somebody I was in a call with, I forgot who it was, mentioned the fact that Deoxys D is OU, so, um, I, I never realized it, so it's just like, okay, whatever, but anyways, yeah, other than that, this is just a U, uh, plain old UU battle, I'm using, uh, Mew, Tornadus, and Clefagus, all of which are new to UU, kind of, I'm gonna say kind of, because Clefagus was always allowed in UU, and Tornadus and Mew were previously UU, but Tornadus was previously UU a long time ago, like, when, at like, after... Thunderous was banned. So, anyways, on with the battle. So, I'm gonna lead off with my Tornadus as he leads off with his Deox. No, not his Deoxys, his Darmanitan. And I let off with my Tornadus, figuring that he might want to lead off with his Darmanitan just to kind of scare my potential Registeel lead. And he does do that, so I'm just gonna go for the U turn and U turn into my Swampert when I kind of should have U turned into my Registeel so I could get my rocks up because I was predicting him to go for the Rock Slide. So, if I could go into Swampert. Take the rock slide and then just earthquake whatever oh excuse me earthquake a lot of things and that's fine but either way uh he you turn to do his deoxys so i figure i'm pretty sure he's gonna go for the taunts to try to keep uh rocks off of his side of the field so that's great for me because i get to smack the thing in the face with a choice band and earthquake no problem <laughs> so um Figuring that he realizes that I'm Choice Bandit and that he doesn't want to take another hit from my Swampert, I'm just going to predict him to go into his Gligar, which is why I go into my Tornadus, so that I can hit the incoming Gligar with a Hidden Power Ice and potentially KO the thing. But he actually stays and goes to the Toxic, so kind of thinking that this may be a Toxic Stalling set, I go for the Hurricane. I don't know why when I should have just gone for the U-Turn, um, because U-Turn is still super effective. Plus, that gives me a safe switch into something else. But I do see him go for the recover. So, just immediately knowing this is a toxic stalling set, I'm just gonna switch out of there, fearing that he's just gonna keep on recovering until I either miss a hurricane or I die, whichever comes first. So, I'm gonna go to Mew so I can get a free nasty pot off, seeing as this Deoxys really can't do a whole hell of a lot to me. And I'm just gonna set up a nasty pot, just realizing that. And right here, this the fact that he goes for taunt right here that that's a pretty big thing as far as it goes for this Mew because this Mew is is a threat to his team kind of so um he really should have gone for any other move than than taunt right there whether it be uh, toxic or nightshade whichever one he should have gone for either one of those because as you'll see this next turn after I kill him with the dark pulse don't know how much that crit mattered because it's super effective uh, t plus two life or blah blah blah. But right here, he I live the U-turn. Now, if he had gone for even Toxic right there, then my Mew would have been dead and he wouldn't have to uh, bring something in to die from a Psychic from this thing because the because that's a plus two stab, Life Orb, Psychic from a Mew. Nothing is gonna take that on his team. So, he, yeah, at that point, he pretty much had to decide, okay, who's gonna die to a psychic? So if he had gone for a Nightshade or Toxic or whatever, or just any move that would have done any amount of damage to my Mew, then he would still have his carrot coast at that point. So, anyways, double down. I go into my uh, this this thing, this thing, with this thing named Tornadus. As he goes into Darmanitan, double switches into his Raikou. As I actually missed the Hurricane, and the, I I wasn't too threatened worried about his Raikou coming in because help that's free hurricane damage off on the Raikou plus I could get a safe switch into my um, Swamper later but anyways right here I go into my Registeel just to try to get my rocks up just figuring okay cool he's not the event Raikou with the Aura Sphere and then uh, I think it was Cody in the call who was saying don't don't rely on that because people are derp and a lot of time they forgets to um to make their Pokemon shine or make the Raikou shiny with Aura Sphere so I was going off of that and going to my uh Kefagus here get the trick room up as he as you see here he does go for the Aura Sphere and 
I was looking at this Confagoras set, I was like, what the hell, what the hell was I thinking when I made this? And it actually helped me a little bit in the situation because I get the Church Room off, I haze away his, his, um, Calm Mind, and I managed to burn him. So, the burn and Life Orb will really help me to take down this Raikou a little bit. So, right now, I'm just waiting for him to kill me so I can get a safe switch into my, uh, Swampert. So, go for Hidden Power just to get a little bit of extra damage up on this thing, and hopefully bring him down to a point where... A turn of Life Orb and Burn will KO him in this next turn. So um, yeah. And looking at that, it looks like a turn. It looks like that will happen. A turn of Life Orb and Burn will finish him off. So go into Swamper. And I miscounted the Trick Room turns. I'm not gonna say that's a bad thing because it's actually a good thing in this case because I do KO his Raikou with a Waterfall. But I miscounted because I brought a Swamper just just to let Swamper die and then he could die from a Life Orb and and Burn. But, um, yeah, turns out Trick Room was still up and stuff. So, anyways, he brings in his Nidoking King now, and he goes for Ice Beam. At the moment in the battle, I was thinking, why did he go for Ice Beam? But afterwards, he told me that he was Choice Specs. And looking at the rest of my team, he couldn't really solidly lock himself onto any single move to hit the majority of my team. So, um, yeah, he's gonna go into his Darmanitan here, and since I know that Darmanitan is Scarf, I know that I can outspeed him with my Scarf Tornadoes, as long as, as long as I don't miss the Hurricane. As long as I don't miss the Hurricane, I should be fine. Fortunately enough, I do hit the Hurricane, that Darmanitan is dead, and his last Pokemon is his Gligar. And, uh, yeah, so just because of how bulky Gligar is, he will be able to survive a Hurricane, but either way, it's pretty much my game at this point, because... Um, that's my phone. But either way, at this point, it's my game because I could just, it, it's my game. Because I still have Scrafty waiting wings to just hit that thing and kill it with an ice punch after a few bulk ups. But, um, yeah. So anyways, that was the match. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And if you did, feel free to leave a comment down below. Don't forget to show that like button some love. And I don't know what else to say. So thanks for watching and peace.